this um, recording is to go into what is a company and it can be a refresher for what what makes up a company um, and this is presented by Victoria Clout. <coughs> Corporations under the Corporations Act are a separate legal entity. They can sue and be sued in their own name. They can enter into transactions. They have the same rights and privileges of, of, a, of a natural person. They are typically profit or non-profit, and most accounting courses focus on for-profit entities. They could be public or private. In this uh, accounting course 1B, we focus on public entities listed on stock exchanges such as the ASX. Um, one of the, the characteristics that is is quite useful, continuous life and transferability of ownership. So continuous life, it doesn't the company doesn't cease to exist if one of the shareholders pull out and it's the shares are easily transferable over the stock exchange. The company doesn't have to get involved in and stop every time a shareholder wants to sh sell their shares. Um, there's also the limitation of liability of shareholders. So shareholders are only liable up to the amount of unpaid calls. There becomes a separation of ownership and management. So the owners don't get have to get involved in running the company. They can leave this up to managers. This can result in agency problems, which are explored in third year accounting courses. Also, uh, company taxes often a better rate than as an individual person's personal marginal tax rate. And companies do come under government regulation. This includes uh, environmental laws and um, employee laws and regulation. So they have to take these into account. So a company begins when a certificate of registration is given from ASIC. The company is, then is formed. The Corporations Act has a number of basic rules, and these can be accepted into the company's constitution. So you can just accept the rules from the Corporations Act, or you can replace these rules and alter them so that each company will often have their own unique company constitution. <coughs> Shareholders uh, elect the board of directors and the board sets all of the policies of the companies. Um, this could be dividend policy, so um, does the dividend have to go to shareholder approval or can the, the board of directors um, approve a dividend straight away? They appoint officers um, such as the company secretary and a chairperson. Also, the board uh, will appoint someone as the chief executive officer, otherwise known as CEO. In some companies, the chairperson is the same person as the CEO. And this is often the case when it's the founder of the company, that there's duality, as we call it, that both CEO is the chairperson. A lot of larger Australian companies um, have separation. So there's a one person as a chairperson and another as the CEO. This is a typical kind of structure. So shareholders, they vote on things of the board of directors and the board of directors reports to the shareholders. That's the function of the financial accounting statements is to report and disclose to the shareholders. So shareholders are the ultimate authority in the company. The board of directors is is then reporting to the chairperson and the chairperson is responsible to the board. The CEO reports to the chair and reports to the board. You then have various executives and a company sec secretary. You can have uh, lots of different types of executives. A lot of companies now have a COO, which is the chief of operations, a CFO, which is chief of financial operations, uh, and various other executive positions. 
So it could be the executive in charge of um, the Asian unit. And then we have uh, maybe a financial controller, maybe a treasurer, and this is tip the typical kind of construction. So the most senior position that accountant can have is the chief financial officer, or otherwise known as CFO. So advantages you have for professional management. So shareholders don't have to get involved in running the company. It is given over to uh, dedicated managers that's their sole job to manage the company. Uh, the legal ability, they can sue in their own name and be sued. And the shareholders are not personally liable for all of the debts of the company, only up to any unpaid calls, the, the, the issue price essentially of their shares. Once, once they've paid that, they're not liable any further. Whereas in a sole entity, the um, owners are personally liable for all of the debts of the business. There could be some tax concessions and it's, it's very easy to transfer shares so that the whole company doesn't come to a standstill when one shareholder wants to sell their shares. That's just conducted on, on the market. And they are in a much stronger position than an individual to be able to get equity from the share market and also to, to have debt raisings. And it's the life is continuous. Some companies have been going uh, for more than 100 years. So the company doesn't have to be wound up every time a shareholder sells or dies. Uh, the, the company will just can, can can theoretically continue forever. Disadvantages. So there is this idea of ownership and control being separate. So sometimes managers may not do everything that is in the interest of owners. And we tend to get this, what we call agency problems. And we, we can look, at, we will look a little bit uh, towards the end of this course at how we can try and align incentives, but we largely leave this up, leave this up to third year courses. Um, also, it's it's quite costly to run a company. You do ha you have to have a board of directors. They've got to meet. You've got to have a constitution. Um, you've got to follow all of this regulation. So there is a burden of regulation which you might want to avoid if you're just starting out in business. There could be additional company taxes. Uh, shareholders have the right to um, to vote, and because they they they're the capital, they've got the capital. They can also um, demand certain things of the company. Uh, if there's only one class of shares, we often call them common shares or ordinary shares. You can have several classes of shares. The owner's right, ownership rights of a shareholder are specified by what's known as the Articles of Incorporation or the, the company's constitution or bylaws. So sometimes you need to look at the company's constitution to work out the specific rights of shareholders. But some are just universal from the corporation's law and are just adopted into the constitution from the corporation's law. So authorised shares, so this is the, the maximum. It's often set by, by the company's charter or the constitution. So it could be 10 million shares. That's all they want to raise in a share raising. And that's all they're authorised up to. So issued shares is the number of shares that are sold. They're out, let's say, on the Australian Stock Exchange, available for people to buy just available for anyone. So once a company's share is on the ASX or another stock exchange, it is up to the demand and supply of shares to, to form a, a share price. So the market dictates 
when there's an interaction of buyers and sellers, what the share price per share is. It's not that it's not up to the company. The company sets an initial issue price, but thereafter it's entirely up to the market to decide. And it's the market's valuation of the future cash flows of the company that help them help them to decide what the share price should be.